so we are live please start hello am i audible hope so yes ma'am you are audible we are live a very good morning to one and all today is 23rd october 2020 is navratri day 7 of the 9 day long festival of navratri today ma kalaratri devi is worshiped ma kalaratri is one of the fairest forms of devi durga she is worshiped on saptami on this day ma kalaratri the seventh form of ma durga is worshiped going by the folk tales when mata parvati gave up her golden avatar to kill shubham na shubham nish ma'am also awarded by women of substance award from time of india times of india thani and she is facilitated for work in environment activities ma'am we are very honored to hear you on this platform on the topic the indian culture and traditions of agriculture on the behalf of skn singhagar college of engineering pandarpur indology foundation and sndt women's university mumbai i mrs vaishali <coughs> taking this opportunity to welcome you ma'am now i request to mrs anjana devasale ma'am to please educate us on the exclusive topic the indian culture and traditions of agriculture ma'am please thank you good morning everybody um with the uh, introduction vishali and also thank you very much uh, indology foundation for inviting me here to speak on a topic that is so dear to me uh well that i apart from these things as a profession that i have been mentioned about me i am also a farmer and i do i practice natural farming on my farm near mumbai uh i will be talking about um, the traditions of natural farming and why we need to look back at the traditions of farming in order to sustain the agriculture in future i'll start my presentation now and then we'll discuss on the way uh aman please tell me when my screen is in sure and i can start talking Is my screen visible? Hello. Is my screen visible? Ha, huh, yes ma'am, you just start. Yeah. Yes, okay. yes ma'am, yes ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So, I'm going to talk about the Indian culture and traditions and mainly about the con conservation and sustainability in agriculture. So, when we talk about conservation the words these days are conservation sustainability and all the big words in environment where we are asked to you know undergo uh, look at some practices which we should be following but i always feel do indians really need to be taught conservation and sustainability because ours is a very old uh, civilization we have been here for almost 5000 years and our land traders we have always had a tradition of conservation we have always had a, a sustainable agricultural system which unfortunately broke in the colonial times now when we talk about when we are trying to reinvent these words of conservation and sustainability we need to understand what our past has been it is not something new that we want to learn we just have to look at our past and just follow the uh, modern practices and the olden tradition which will actually be very well run because we will not have to you know discover something new it is just what our grandfathers and their our forefathers told us we just be bringing that into practice 
Yeah. Uh, this is a seal of the Harappa. Okay. Uh, Harappa and Mohenjo-daro. This was one of the most common, um, uh, commonly displayed seals. And uh, this is a uh, man and the animals, birds, insects, snakes, everything is there. So we always say that con conservation for Indians is not a cause. It is not even a glorified mission. It's always a way of life. We have been living like this. In the middle, it may be we have forgotten some things, but um, you know, they just have to be, it's still in the back of our minds, our stories, our folklores, uh, the grandmother's stories that we told, or we listen to Panchatantra as children. And we listen to the songs. In fact, so many things that we do, we write, we read about it, we listen about conservation, but you know, we think that it's just a part of the story. Actually, is was a part of the story now, but previously it was part of the culture and tradition and a day-to-day -day thing that they were practicing as a way of life. So uh, now I tell you about a few traditions about which we which aided conservation now this is the devrai it is the sacred forest when you go in the western ghats or you go up to kerala or in fact even when you go to himachal pradesh and uh, even northeast india rajasthan everywhere all over india when you go there are something called the devrais of course they would be by different names now devrais are the sacred forests and these sacred forests are maintained without any rule of the government. Nobody cuts the branches or nobody fells the trees of the forest, of the trees in the forest. So Devrai is an ancient, very ancient tradition. Even now, when botanists have to go and study some species of the local species, they go to a Devrai because it is guarded by tradition. It is guarded by, if you can see in this day, right, there is a little uh, stone statue, which could be the god or the goddess of the day, right? Now, this uh, forest also guards some water holes or it is the, uh, not water holes, I could say that these are the forests that guard the ground table. It is here that the la water falls and it gets sucked in and it, um, you know, recharges the ground water. So, all these forests were not just as centers of conservation of forests, but they were also centers of conservation of um, animals, birds, and even water. Fortunately, the tradition of Devrai has survived. Even in Kokan, when you go, there are Devrais. You go to Kerala, there are Devrais, which you can actually go and see the Devrais and see the, the lush green forest. Uh, of course, in some day rise, you know, there has been filling then in the name of constructing the original temple has gone and now it has become a very commercialized temple. But in spite of that, there is a reverence about the temple. Our culture is about the reverence of nature. It is reverence. We have gods which have their wahans or the gods travel on uh, animals. Now, Lakshmi's wahan is out. Okay. So it's all this, when you look at these gods and their bahanas is a very, um, it's just, a, you know, going ahead from these devrais that how wahans and gods also teach us something about conservation. Now, when we look at Lakshmi and the wahana is owl. So people wonder, what is, why should owl be the, uh, you know, the vehicle of Lakshmi? Now, again, we are an agricultural society. Are most of the people in India still follow agriculture. So the owl would be killing the rodents. Okay. So when the rodents are killed, that means the grain is conserved. When the grain is conserved, then the Lakshmi, the, the bitta, the money is coming in. Similarly, when we look at Kartikeya, this Vahana is the peacock. Now, because it is the Vahana of Kartikeya, nobody kills the peacock. Okay. And again, peacock is known to kill the rodents. Peacock is known to control the snakes. And the cycle of life is maintained because of conservation. So, you know, nobody had to make rules and regulations. Now, for us, killing wildlife is a regulation. And you are punished. So, there are still people who try to find out loopholes and they go. But in the 
uh, traditional Indian culture, all these beliefs and myths, they were the ones which were conserving the uh, wildlife. They were conserving not just the forest, but also the animals and the birds and the insects and the snakes that were residing in it. So this is the one of the major living tradition that you can still see in India. Um, we have had, uh, you know, ours is a very old system, color civilization, and we, we've been here for the past so many years. But how is it that those 5,000 years, the human population in India was sustained? One of the reasons is that the reverence for Bhumi. We earth, we just don't call it uh, like, you know, in English, if you are to mention soil, they call it soil or they even call it dirt, but we never call it dirt. We call earth as Bhumi. It is celebrated as Bhumi. It is praised as Bhumata. She is the mother who is uh, looking after us, who is providing for us, who is cultivating for us. And she is worshipped as the Bhu Devi. So even, you know, when we uh, strike the pickaxe while building a house, first we do the Bhumi Pujan. Okay. Because I'm going to injure you, I'm going to fracture you, I'm going to break the monolithic layer that you have formed, that layer that sustains us. So we worship the Bhu Devi and we call ourselves as the Bhumi Putras. We call, we are the children of this Bhumi. There is great reverence for this uh, land that we live in, the land that sustains us, the feeds us and cultivates for us. Uh, when we look at, I was mentioning that uh, India is a land of agriculturists. We were uh, somewhere in us, we all are agriculturists by heart, even though we are living in multi story buildings, we are living in um, uh, cities, we have no time for nature, we have no time for environment. But, you know, the nature and the traditions and the culture of agriculture are living within us. We are still agriculturists at heart and the agriculture, love for agriculture has been kept alive by the traditions and culture and the festivals. If you look at all these, I'm just looking at, there's so many festivals, I'm just looking at one festival that is the Pongal or that is the Sankranti, that's the Bihu or the Lohri. All across India, these festivals are celebrated with so much of love and there is so much of homecoming and there is so much of celebration with all and all these are all these are the harvest festival you know uh, and they're celebrated because the new festival the new rice the new crop that comes in is prayed it is worshipped uh, if you look at pongal i'm just taking one example of pongal it is a you know, it is not just one day festival, it is a many day festival. And on the day of Mat Pongal, that is the cows, which were still now roaming around in the uh, in the uh, land, they, are, they come home, they are worshipped. Okay. And it is not just the land, but it is also the animals that sustain the land that are worshipped. If you look at Maharashtra, we have Pora. Okay. And Pora is celebrated as Bail Pora. It is also in Vidarbha, it is celebrated on another day. And Bail Pora is one of the main festivals where the cows are, uh, the oxen are reared. So they are prayed, you know, and uh, they are not used. Like similarly, we have a day called the Rishi Panchami where the animals are given rest. Okay. So we care for the animals, the animals are given rest. And on that day, people who follow that, they do not eat anything uh, which was plowed by the ox. Okay. Then we have the Vasubaras. Vasubaras is the first day of Diwali where the cow and the calf, they are prayed. They are treated well. They are given rest. You know, uh, sweet meats are made for them. Puran Pori is made for them. So all these traditions and cultures are, even though we are not following agriculture, we are reminded of our in depth, how indebted we are towards the field that is feeding us and the animals that are taking care of us. So now this is how we are reliving and we are reinventing 
and this is how we are passing on the message to the children even you know we, we don't go to a cow these days at least the child can t- be told that this is the importance of the day to day that this is how the harvests are coming and then we try to bring in some uh, uh, you know some toran we eat uh, or rice and then we pray so is this just to show how our ancestors were doing it and how we are tradition uh another thing about these festivals is that they are all very specific to the uh locality where they are okay so there can be a one or two three different uh, days when they are celebrated because that's because of the geographical locations of the uh, days only uh, and that's because of the lunar calendar that we follow everything that we follow is based on the lunar calendar so they can be you know the calendars can vary and the days of celebration can vary but the ethos is the same now even as as there is modern technology for increasing the production we must keep in mind that the traditional system has stood the test of time along with cow um, along with soil the graveyard like i told you and panchagavya is something so when we do some rituals we always you know we may be disconnected from nature or we may be disconnected from environment or agriculture for that matter but whenever we have a little ritual at home we have this panchagavya that we bring in the cow dung we bring the gomutra and also with the panchagavya and the cow this thing we also pray the panchamahabhuta so however technologically advanced we may be and the back of the mind we are maintaining this culture of conservation we are maintaining this culture of the and we are and you know we are respecting uh, the nature so we always talk of the panchamaham we pray to the lord now only uh, now what has happened that only when the times are bad we start praying okay so uh, then we pray to the indra we pray to the aruna um, to the varuna and then we uh, you know for the good times to come uh, and i thought particularly like navratri because navratri is the time of new beginning and again every home which follows the customs of navratri diligently
audience, uh, speaker, Anjan Man, is placing some network soon. Thank you. Thank you. You left. back soon. Am I visible now? Am I in the VP? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yes, so ma'am. When did I leave? When did, when, what, can you please tell me where, what are we discussing? Uh, Miss, your thought on even as we em embrace modern technology. So now I can't put on the video. I'll talk only now. Okay. Okay. I'm so sorry. I was out of the meeting, but I'll continue now. Now, uh, uh, ma'am, you can uh, you can uh, share your PPT again. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, no, we so are able to see screen. you. We are unable to see your screen. Please share. I'm, I'm sharing. Your I'm sharing screen screen. Screen. Huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Is my screen visible now? Yes, go ahead. I'm able to see picture. Yes, uh, sharing your screen, that is okay. Yeah, I'm sharing the screen. I can see the picture. But we cannot. Means no, I cannot. Now it's, I, I only get to say stop sharing. Only message I get is stop sharing now. Okay, then stop sharing and uh, reconnect the sharing. Reconnect. Yeah. Uh, 
stop sharing yeah and go to the meeting or or should i or should i um, speak without the screen uh okay turn on your camera and go ahead yeah so because we are wasting time unnecessarily no yeah am i am i visible yes i am uh, no 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 am i not visible also no I just wait me uh, you are facing network problem the audience inconvenience i am very sorry because of this network we are having problem to connect to you no if i if, if i am i audible if i am i audible yeah yeah you are audible and uh, your screen is showing just anjana devasale so if i talk they'll be at least able to hear yeah. yes so yes ma'am yes yeah, yeah I, yes I, I, let's not waste time i am so sorry because of technology i am uh, yeah there's so many things to tell you and um, i was just telling that um, our agriculture basically it's basically it's all about conservation and celebrating the biocultural diversity just as there is a diversity of people there is a diversity of bio there is a diversity of the crops there is a diversity of the ecosystems that we live in uh, but with the advent of modern technology chemical fertilizers have taken in and uh, there is there is you know so much of uh, pesticide there are so many insecticides and weedicides that are going into the farm and the soil which we were celebrating as bhumata or bhudevi now is being polluted and because we are polluting the uh, soil and we're polluting the crops with and we bombarding the crops with so much things the food that we are getting is also of the same and now, now we don't trust the food you know when we are eating fruits or we are eating vegetables we always have this suspicion in mind uh, am i eating chemicals am i are the chemicals being ingested then what we do we wash the food and in spite of washing so you know the trust on the food is little going down so what is it that um what is it about the conservation and what is about the agriculture that we can do so like i told you that i am a natural farmer and i am uh, i am my guruji is padmashri subhash palekar from whom we have learned the lessons of going back to nature and going back to natural farming so natural farming basically you consider the soil as a living system but in english if you read about uh, you know if you are reading about farming in english uh, books it's referred to as dirt whereas we call it as a living system now soil basically contains it's not just minerals it is a lot of living things we call of the 36 crores devatas so the soil contains those many microorganisms which actually you know when we say that i am farming it's not that i am farming it is the soil that is farming for us so the natural system of agriculture natural farming basically talks of conservation and sustainability by using the natural produce it is not it is not at all dependent on pesticides or chemicals which are brought from outside but it is an integration of the microorganisms of the cow of um, the uh, things that feed the microorganisms and the microorganisms work for the plant so it is a completely in balance symbiotic system where each one is working for the other that's why the food that you get from a natural grown farm is the best food that is available now a lot of people say that uh, natural farming organic farming they refer they refuse to accept it now they they refuse to accept it because they think that how can a low productive farm like a natural farming farm sustain such a huge population of india now the thing is that uh, okay uh, accepted that you know uh, the farm 
from a natural growing system would produce little less food but it will it is the only sustainable way of producing food now when we look at uh, some of the farms where a lot of chemicals have been used and excess water has been given that soil is absolutely depleted those farms which were once a time once upon a time very productive they have now stopped production so you know there is a law of economics that the input output um, so what happens in a chemical farmer uh, chemical farm that you are increasing the inputs you are increasing hybrid seeds you are increasing the chemicals that go in and for a point of time the curve is on a rise so you get more input more output more input more output then it comes to a plateau where you put in how much of input you put the output is going to be the same but after some time when the honeymoon period of the earth and the chemicals is over the output starts reducing so a so a field it becomes incapable of producing food whereas in a chemical um, there is a naturally farm systems the so natural farming that i follow we have the four pillars one is the bijamal where the seed is treated with a concoction to feed the microbes you know so the microflora around the seed microflora means the bacteria the fungus the actinomites or mycetes which are actually the ones which support the plant to grow they that seed is treated with uh, that then the other one is jivamrut jivamrut is basically a um, fermented mixture of cow dung cow urine gram flour jaggery and a handful of good soil so these are the five components which are mixed in water and that uh, is applied to the feed so this basically supports the soil flora and it increases the soil flora and accordingly the plants also grow in it and then the third is the wapsa wapsa is a very very scientific way of looking at the soil now generally when we are doing chemical farming we just allow water to flow into the soil so liters and liters of water just flow into the soil and the soil is um, it becomes saturated with water so in this case when the soil becomes saturated with water the roots can't grow and the roots are don't remain so healthy but in i mean the condition of wapsa is maintained now the condition of wapsa actually means that optimum level of air and optimum level of moisture in the soil okay so uh, this is another pillar of um, natural farming along with these uh, the pesticides that are used are of absolute um, natural origin they are the leaves of a lot of plants commonly found plants which are we know that a lot of medicinal plants are available and um, and they are used from that we also had a very good traditional system of um, ruksha ayurveda so we know ayurveda for humans so there was one ruksha ayurveda which was for the plants so there are a lot of medicinal plants around us which again are um, mixed with um, cow urine they are processed in the farm itself not in a chemical factory and then they are used for farming so all these when the system when we are trying to go to natural farming we are going back to old system of conservation of sustainability and this is the way so even we if you look at technology when we are taking technology we are taking tractors we are using which of course uh, we will justify that for a, you know such a big population to support such a big population we need um, uh, to use modern technology yes we do need to use modern technology but if you are not farming totally by the natural way you need to keep the focus of using the natural systems you have to take in the consideration of the conservation that we are um, methods and systems that we follow and incorporate it with the modern science incorporate it with the new technology and then our agriculture is going to be sustainable so all these beliefs myths stories that what that we are practicing as festivals and as rituals they are just a reminder to us that nature and conservation have to be followed have to be you can't just leave one of them and think of a sustainable life 
and the present times are a great reminder to us that nature cannot be you know overpowered we have tried to overpower our uh, we talk of ecocentric and egocentric we are living in a very egocentric life that man has the power to control nature but the recent times have shown that we have to live an ecocentric life and the ecocentric life starts with our agriculture and farming and this is how we will be going in future so natural farming and respect for nature and sustainability in agriculture is the way forward to us thank you so much vishali ha yes, yes. Uh, uh, anjana ma'am it's thank you thanks a lot do we problem with network and yeah. sorry for the union audience but uh, yeah thank you thank you very thank much anjana i'm sorry for the network issue at my side also that is again technology yeah yeah yes we can't help it it's okay yeah. uh, now uh, i would like to introduce our active speaker shilata menon ma'am ma'am is well known as born environment conservationist and has been working as environment educator for two decades she is a post graduate in microbiology from mumbai university and have completed a certificate course in training in environment education and also a diploma in ecology and environment presently she is a green entrepreneur promoting environment friendly products made by social groups she has conceptualized and operated a project called the green shopee for enviro vigil for 8 years presently as an individual she is networking with around 20 ngos across the country and has more than 80 different types of eco friendly products with her moving from awareness to action and understanding the need of livelihood for so many in country she has initiated a campaign called sell in india under this campaign she has announced her all eco friendly diwali 10 products from 8 ngos across three states tamil nadu maharashtra and gujarat she was awarded as the woman of future award wotfn 19 from 455 global nominations in 2019 she was one of the 30 winners in the environment category welcome ma'am ma'am we are very honored to hear you on this platform on a very unique topic green entrepreneurship a path to a green living on the behalf of indology foundation skn sihangar college of engineering as i mrs vaishali chaman take this opportunity to welcome you ma'am now i request shilata menon ma'am to please enlighten us on the exclusive topic green entrepreneurship a path of a green living ma'am please over thank you thank you so much vaishali ma'am for the most elaborate uh, introduction uh, first of all a very very warm and uh, uh, beautiful sunshine i think today uh, during this auspicious occasion of navratri i really thank geology foundation and sndt university for giving me this great occasion to speak on the campaign that you just announced for sell in india and i think my uh, session con- it's a continuation to kanjana for just now speaking about how we celebrate nature or uh, how we are always so closely associated with it how it is our tradition to be environment friendly and on that note i would uh, directly i think dive into my little ppt that i have made uh, there is so much kanjana said there is so much to talk Uh, Sorry to disturb, ma'am. I don't know. I am also having problem with network, but I couldn't see your video. Please turn on your video. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you. 
Thank you. My video is on. I thought it shared my screen. I'll be sharing the screen in some time. Okay. Okay. So as I said, I said we'll directly dive into my uh, topic, and I'm trying to encompass this whole concept of conservation and entrepreneurship. It's my little eco-friendly Diwali kit that I have to offer. So, uh, uh, the kind permission of all of you, I will take with my little PPT. Can everybody see the PPT? Can you see it? Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We can. Also tell you? Yeah. Yeah. Conservation, yeah. entrepreneurship, and women. Right. Uh, I think all this goes very much hand in hand. And women are the pillar, I feel, in India, especially or even across the world. Uh, conservation and women, uh, I think they go very much hand in hand. And uh, it's, it's uh, as Viju also spoke the other day. It's very inborn within us. It's very inherent within us to be uh, emotional, to be more compassionate, to be more conservative. Uh, so I think uh, we don't have to, we don't have to teach us all these things. Entrepreneurship also, uh, as she rightly said, and we all have understood, women are multitaskers. So I think we, women along with conservation can be wonderful entrepreneurs and i am looking at a little different uh, kind of a concept here which i rather which is largely uh, for, uh, called green entrepreneurship so let let's understand what is this and before i jump into any topic as to what we need to do we first need to understand why we need to do this and i feel that's the crux here uh, as uh, Vaishali put it just now, yes, I am a conservationist. I've been in the field now for more than 20 years. Uh, one planet, our dear Mother Earth. I think we all, we don't have to elaborate how we how much we need her. And with COVID and global warming, all these terms are very, very um, often heard of, I think. Everybody is very much aware about uh, these things. But... I think we said sometimes try to keep it in the background because of our fast living. We have many other priorities, but uh, it can be in the background, but really support. So we really need to very strongly understand at this point that we have just one planet. We have just one place. Jina yahi hai. Marna isi par hai. Uske kahi, isiwa aur kahi nahi jana. And I would love to say, I would not say that limited resources, we say finite resources, which was really according if if we work in the tune or work uh, along with uh, nature's um, ways of dealing with things. I think resources are innumerable. We have lots and lots of them. Uh, unfortunately, there has been a lot of exploitation of the whole thing for our needs, our requirements, our wants. So this is the main crux today. We really need to understand we have one planet and we have limited resources. So conservation is all about saving what we have. It's all about protecting what we have. It is all about sustainable development. It is all about keeping something for the future generation. We all uh, do are very, um, as women, we, we are... Uh, we are the pillars of the family. We have wonderful children. We have wonderful um, families that we, we support. In ke liye kuch to rakna hai. We have to keep something. We cannot, our super brains cannot create a forest. That's why, as Anjana said, Devrai hota tha. Because they, they, they used to understand, they strictly understood ki what we can do is only protect. We can't create a forest. We can't create water. You can't create the atmosphere. You can't create. Uh, soil, uh, one uh, gram of little soil, as she rightly put it, Bhumi, Bhumata. Why do you call it like that? Because we, our, our ancestors realized that it is not within our capacity to make soil. So, jo hum nahi bana paate, jo humne, we, with the things which we can't create, I don't think we have any right to destroy that. 
so uh, the very first question is why we are doing it because we have one not what we need to do we need to definitely look at sustainable de development a development which goes hand in hand with nature a development that goes for our future generations also so then the next question comes is how do we do this and i think the the path has been laid by our present government by our prime minister about talking about atmanirbhar india this is a part of the larger how and i think i focus on atmanirbhar india and i will try to point out here certain things that we as individuals need to do to enhance this whole movement called atmanirbhar india uh, atmanirbhar india is an offset of the concept that uh, narendra modi ji talked about make in india and uh, with my 10 years experience i would like to point out here that there is a lot of make in india that's already happening uh, we uh, just again emphasizing a little on why we need to do all this the larger rakshas jo bada sabse bada um villain is there who we need to really tackle during navratri with all our energies all our positive shaktis is global warming covid cyclones heavy rains um famine droughts all are offsets they are all consequences of global warming you may tackle today a covid uh, we are all aware invisible virus in the diversity ye virus ka bhi diversity hai in bacteria ka bhi diversity hai an invisible virus today has caused havoc today has brought us to a standstill so definitely there is something wrong in the normal that we have been following and definitely we need to relook at that uh, what is global warming why do we need to understand or uh, why is it all happening these are more scientific i won't dwell into it too much but largely we need to understand jo earth ka temperature hai the, the temperature that earth uh, because of which we have life on earth and not on any other planet is because of the beautiful uh, combination of our distance from the sun our atmosphere the wonderful mixture of gases everything together gives life on earth and uh, earth like our body temperature also has a particular temperature that has to be maintained that is being maintained it very marginally increases naturally but today what has happened today basically we are looking at drastic increases in this temperature because of all the greenhouse gases and things like that. and how do we mitigate this change is very much in your and my hands and we definitely need to understand this and understand it in the context of all that we do so carbon footprint is a very is a very important term but a very bad thing that we leave behind and apne ko isko mitigate karna hai we have to definitely reduce our carbon footprint we have to leave more positive footprints for our for our children but reduce our carbon footprint every action that we do from morning to night is adding to the carbon dioxide is adding to our carbon footprint which is slowly but surely uh, raising up there and causing the uh, increase in temperature yeah so that was a little part about awareness i always believe ki koi bhi kaam koi bhi action be it anything largely uh, all conservation activities are uh, restricted or rather related to jhad lagana so we uh, we want to plant a lot of trees we want to we want to make the planet more green but every action that happens should be needs to be preceded by awareness why are we doing it what are what are we trying to do are we understanding the um, the the uh, uh, the intention be behind doing something like this so awareness surely precedes any action and if the awareness is very emphatic if the awareness is very uh, very very uh, to the point as uh, also people put it as if it affects the emotional um, quotient in in yourself i think that leads to a very uh, a very committed action so awareness i mean sir aapko kabhi plastic ban nahi karna padega you want to ban plastic wo apne aap people will reduce it 
they they will definitely try to eliminate uh, these things from uh, from from their requirement because they understand why they need to do something so when i talk about awareness to action i have been in the field of environment education for more than 20 years we used to do a lot of education activities awareness activities as i always put it we may be 100% literate unfortunately we are less environment sensitive we are less environment literate or then we know many things we just keep it ignorance is bliss we know them we keep it at that who doesn't know that today the air is polluted who doesn't know that our water bodies are are uh, are less of water and more of chemicals who doesn't know that chemicals are leaching into the soil and we are probably eating a lot of uh, uh, chemicals in the, in in the name of your fruits and vegetables but is there something that we can do i can do about it there's a lot that the government needs to do there's a lot that anyone uh, else uh, needs to do the law needs to do and the thing. but my point is what is it that i can do in all of these things is is what we need to definitely focus on and in all the various things i thought of talking about uh, diwali which is like the soon approaching festival diwali is an a festival which is celebrated pan india uh, across the country har state mein har uh, rajya mein diwali is the most is the most uh, awaited festival uh it has its own conservation aspects it has its own traditional values it has a wonderful blend if you look at it as to uh, how to support environment and things like that unfortunately many of the traditional aspects are slowly less uh, followed more of the uh, uh dhamaka wala celebration uh, things are more uh, more followed so let's revive some of those uh, those little traditions that we have let's try to be uh, we a uh, uh, god or nature or mother earth or anyone has forced us now to sit within the confinements of our four walls in our home celebrate diwali probably have an online diwali chat with your family members online and things like that so then in that uh, pretext can we spend some time and try to look at what we have been doing under the uh, the the uh, larger banner of festivals can we re look at it uh, can we understand if they are really in tune with our environment or not in tune with it and if if we understand that can we look at changing mending our ways so with that i would like to announce my earth friendly and livelihood friendly diwali kit and coming to the second most second important part of my my work is conservation green living is one part of it livelihood is another part of it we are all in a very very uh, difficult situation i would say uh, at this point with covid uh, affecting economies largely drastically but i would really urge my audience to understand that in all of these the ngos probably are going through the toughest times and the ngos are really really need a lot of support from all of us to gather themselves they are yet are working i've been very closely associated with them uh, the same the, the same thing they always echo to me that give us work we will take care of ourselves give us give us uh, uh, buy our products take take uh, uh, give us an opportunity to serve you and we 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 don't need ration we don't need your money we will be able to we'll be able to compose ourselves we'll be able to gather ourselves so with that little uh, this in mind i would like to uh, uh, come to a very important point here is ek ke liye sab kuch probably we have been doing we have been associated with some good cause inherently i always agree ki humans are good uh, no one wants to do bad कि कोई कोई किसी को मारना नहीं चाहता है नो वन वन वांट्स टू कट नो वन वांट्स किल लिटिल मिलीपीड और सेंटीपीड ऑन द रोड बट कभी कभी हालात ऐसे हो जाते हैं लाइफ स्टाइल ऐसे हो जाते हैं दैट वी डोंट इवन हमको दिखाई नहीं दे रहा है कि आर लाइफ स्टाइल आर एक्चुअली किलिंग द फॉरस सो इनहेरेंटली इफ ह्यूम आर गिवेन एन ऑप्शन दे वुड लाइक टू सपोर्ट दे वुड लाइक टू दे वुड लाइक टू डू गुड दे वुड लाइक टू सपोर्ट द सोसाइटी बट दे शुड बी श्योर वॉट दे आर डूइंग इज गोइंग टू द सोसाइटी दे शुड बी श्योर दैट दे आर दे आर रियली दे आर एबल टू रियली ब्रिज दिस गैप एंड आई वुड रियली एट अर्ज इन दिस दिवाली 
कि एक के लिए सब कुछ करने से अच्छा है कि सब के लिए कुछ तो करें लेट्स डू समथिंग फॉर एवरी वन लॉट्स एंड लॉट्स एंड लॉट्स एंड मीन आई हैव सो मेनी कॉल्स कमिंग फ्रॉम एन जी ओ वी हैव दीज प्रोडक्ट फ्लाइंग दिस टाइम Uh, we will not been able to do any corporate exhibition. We have not been able to meet out, reach out to people. So how is it that we, you can help us sell these products, help us uh, reach it out to the larger audiences? So this is a small gist. I feel uh, four screens, ten screens will not be ima- enough to put across to you how many hardworking people are out there. In all their given odds, I would love. you i would love i mean i would expect all of you all to concentrate on the smiles on their faces they are all engrossed in their work they are they are smiling they know that they'll be able to emerge out of these odds and uh, one common thing you will all appreciate that largely all these photographs are of women it's not coincidental largely aapko women ke hi photographs milenge which are uh, where you see them working hard I'm not trying to disregard the the fact that men don't work or anything of that sort, but women ka ek onus, ek commitment is very, very, very different. So these are some of my NGOs who have been a, who are a part of my kit. We have Tamil Nadu here, we have Satara here, we have uh, Shahpur, the tribal belt here, we have Palgar here, we have ladies from the national park, Bombay, uh, Sanjay Gandhi National Park. in this one photograph i still have many more which i couldn't include in the slide for you but uh, i say i tell to people you know i mean my products are only a tool for me uh, they are a larger tool to introduce these ngos they are a larger tool to uh, to get you closer so i always tell my my customers ki chalo mere sath i i'd be very happy to take you to these these ngos spend a day with them spend understand uh under what circumstances they are doing all these things i feel that leaves a very very uh, uh permanent kind of uh, thing in your mind and i always say it is the energy of these ladies that keeps me going under all odds once you have known who are the ones who are making the kit i come to the most important question ki isme hai kya what is there in this earth friendly kit oh it's a beautiful kit i'm all excited about it i am very proud to say that i've already got 20 to 25 orders of the kit who are waiting ki kab uh, unka cheeze dispatch ho from here uh, quickly i'd like to uh, summarize what i have for you in the kit but uh, i like to emphasize here ki this kit a human scale to hey definitely for us but i would really like all my buyers to also remember that this is for our nature this is for our in the nature we have the plant kingdom the animal kingdom so this is for our animals these are for our plants also so uh, diwali sirf apna nahi hai diwali inka bhi hai uh, the animals the pets the plants and the ones who have them they are the ones who are closer to nature definitely they they understand it faster they are more they are more they are more compassionate towards it so i have the uh, uh, little uh, uh, neem soap uh, here and uh, the plant shampoo so plant shampoo is not a shampoo made up of plants it is a shampoo for the plants so uh, again uh, i thank anjana and her team here to help me make this beautiful shampoo uh she's been my mentor when it comes to any things relate anything related to plants and uh, uh biodiversity related to the flora so we have this wonderful thing made of neem oil algae and the lemon juice and it's 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 amazing i mean people have already started you know uh, i need i need more of that then uh, we have uh, we have the um uh, one minute i'll just Sorry for that. Yeah, so I'll just uh, 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 reduce it from full screen so I'm able to talk about each product. So this is the neem soap that I was talking for our pets. 
they keep the ticks and pests at bay this is the plant shampoo i just now spoke about this is the little agarbatti here this comes from gujarat uh, the tamil the soap comes from tamil, tamil nadu the agarbattis are again beautiful agarbatti today uh, unfortunately is the third largest uh, cause of cancer uh, that is because of the chemicals that is because of the uh, the uh, smoke that's released so this is made by sanskrit mahavidyalay in gujarat where sanskrit is a way of living and they have adopted a town and this is employment for the ladies of that town yahan each agarbatti ka masala is rolled on to the agarbatti itself it is not uh, directly pressed on to it and you just uh, dip it in in uh, sense there is a beautiful agarbatti a uh, flavor which is called spice fusion which is good for the ones who have uh, uh, issues like allergies and asthma and things like that so it it's got lavang elaichi you know all the all the wonderful things that we use for a cough and cold uh, uh, powdered into it uh, the wonderful utna that we all need for our first bath during diwali this is made by a wonderful group along the uh, the uh, outskirts of mumbai shahapur district uh, the tribal women out there uh this is something that is really really catching up and i don't want to romanticize it too much it's like you know the the cow uh, the, the by product of or rather the cow dung bias uh the whole thing burns the whole dia burns and uh, uh, it's got the panchadravya elements in it it's got uh, pure ghee and things like that it gives you very much homeum kind of a the home kind of a feeling it disinfects your house of course but at the same time it makes it very divine and um, there, there are lots of vermi i always try to tell uh, it's small it's pretty and i feel everything in nature or everything that we use uh, we should always try to question ourselves ki really do we need so much so many so the same devotion i think we can send across to our uh, to our gods by having less number of them it's not that you you soon your house with so many beers or so many lights ek do char diya lagayenge to be same same um, Uh, the same idea is transpired i think so we have this little set of cow dung uh, it is rested on a small chaurang here the chaurang again is made of waste pine wood so this is not again cut from the tree this is pine wood is used to pack heavy machinery so this comes from the scrap the adivasis the tribals from jawhar the largest tribal belt of maharashtra uh, they do they they cut it to shape they do a little varli painting on it and you have this little chaurang आप भगवान का नैवेद्य भगवान के छोटे आइडल्स या इवन दिया फॉर दैट मैटर आप उस पर रख सकते हो दिस इज ब्यूटिफुल ऑफकोर्स दी हल्दी कुमकुम विल नॉट बी पुट इन टेरा फोट एट बी पुट इन लिटिल बॉक्स बट अगेन दिस हल्दी कुमकुम आउट हियर इज टोटली ऑर्गेनिक फॉर यू दिस कम्स फ्रॉम द बीड फार्मर्स दुमकुम इज ब्यूटिफुल इट इज मेड ऑफ हल्दी एंड लेमन जूस हल्दी और लेमन जूस को अगर आप मिक्स करोगे या चूना वगैरह का तो आपको लाल कलर मिलता है एंड देन इट इज बेसिकेटेड इट इज एन अमेजिंग वो जब यू ओपन द बॉक्स इट सेल्फ यू कैन गेट दिस वेरी वेरी नाइस एंड ब्यूटिफुल कुमकुम स्टेल अनफॉर्चुनेटली दिस सो मच केमिकल नाउडेज इन कुमकुम में एक बार लगाया तो वो निकलता ही नहीं सो नेचुरल प्रोडक्ट्स का वन ऑफ द फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट साइन वुड बी दैट दे विल नेवर स्टे ऑन ऑन टू योर बॉडी दे विल रन ऑफ uh they they move off easily so that's one of the ways you can understand these products the colors are natural you know? again we have these wonderful festoons for your decoration these are made from the leaves of the tarbola tree again a beautiful uh, uh, um, contribution by the women of uh, tamil nadu for you there uh we have the wonderful fridge bags so these fridge bags are again dyed in haldi this is made by the women of the national park Uh, sanjay gandhi national park sanjay gandhi national park uh, is the green lung of mumbai as we all are aware and the people who are staying inside the park they are the true ambassadors they are the true conservers they are the true protectors we need to protect them they will protect the forest definitely so this this is empowerment for those women there they have never moved out of the park they have never done anything elsewhere today unfortunately because of covid they are forced to come out they are forced to work on the roads as daily wage workers and things like that so seva charitable trust is trying to give them maximum work so that the ladies can again go back to their uh, their forest they they be in conjunction with them and we do our conservation work with them also 
the same little one that you can see here is a small broom uh, lakshmi puja ke din uh, i understand that uh, broom ka ki bhi puja karte hain so this broom here is made from the leaves of the khajur ka patta date uh, date palm uh, this and they are weaved very beautifully so this is actually uh, amisha when she had gone to this nakshatra uh, saw the ladies doing this and she was so fascinated and taken she's like she never even knew that these many things they they are always doing so if we can give back to them something that they have been traditionally doing something that they have they know very well they, they would love to do it they would they would be very comfortable with doing it and they would definitely give you uh, one of the best possible results i forgot to add this little fellow here this is a roll on this is amrut dara this is made by an ngo in palghar which is working for the protection of cows non yielding cows raste pe chhod dete they leave them on the road to take care of themselves this ngo actually protects these cows and unke uh, products again cow dung usse so bahut sare products banate hain this roll on has acted as a couch has acted as an armor for me throughout covid so uh, it's a it's a, a very small bottle and you need very very little you can just dab it on your mask थोड़ा अपने छाती पे थ्रोट पे लगा दो इट रियली कीप्स ऑल बैक्टीरियल एंड वायरल इन्फेक्शन दिवाली धमाका बिना क्रैकर्स का तो दिवाली होगा नहीं तो आई अंडरस्टैंड दिस इज माई थिंग विच इज स्टिल ऑन इट्स वे फ्रॉम योर मध्य प्रदेश एंड दीज आर हैचर्स दीज आर नॉट क्रैकर्स so uh, if you have all understood what anjana uh, and all, all the um, conservationists all the nature lovers or the plant lovers are trying to say is we have we are very much indebted to this flora that's around us we all know um, we cannot create oxygen we are breathing oxygen worth 50 million rupees free of cost Absolutely, of course. Abhi ventilator ka cost aapko batane ki zarurat nahi. I don't have to emphasize how expensive a ventilator is when you are probably gasping for breath and things like that. But this we have been. There was a very beautiful WhatsApp message that went around by the Italian old man when he had to pay the bill for uh, recovery after COVID, and he had tears in his eyes. And everybody thought that you know it is because of the bill, and he said, "No, it's not that." today i realized what i have been getting free of cost for me all these years and i have never bothered about i have never cared about so apna definitely i feel as in our hindu mythology talks about this that we are trustees of mother we don't have a right on it trusty ka pehle kaam hota hai responsibility right baad mein aata first we have a responsibility to protect conserve to keep what god what mother nature has given us and then the next part comes is right and when we understand responsibility you know our rights also we know how to use them so these wonderful crackers i'm so excited to uh, receive them these are all beautiful uh, seeds inside them so isko aapko jalana nahi isko bona hai and you will have wonderful wonderful plants and trees uh, coming out of them so uh, that's for you i would only love to end my my uh, speech here is let's all be a part of our environment and not apart from it whenever i see children you know i uh, any occasions i have been called as judge to uh, judge the um, best out of waste yeah drawing competition so bacche always tend to draw a, a picture with a very beautiful green scenery there are animals there are plants there's a cow But they never draw humans inside it so i always feel that we sometimes feel na hum log we environment udhar hai and we are here but it's not like that we are a part of this environment we need to understand that we are a part of it and not a part of it so if we are truly able to understand this statement i feel we'll be able to put all that we i try to say in in context you are most welcome to get in touch with me for any more clarification by once again thank this entire forum to give me this wonderful opportunity to put up with my work. thank you so much thank you thanks a lot shrilata men and ma'am
It's wonderful. Thanks a lot. I would like to thank. It is pleased us that we have 5,000 year of agriculture practice and celebrated our Mother Earth as Bhumata and worshipped as Bhudevi and known as Bhum, Bhumiputra. Agriculture is not just a profession, it's tradition culture. Your thought on even as we embrace modern technology for increasing production, we must keep in mind our nature. Your insight on natural system for farming is great. The importance of WAPSA, so simple yet essential. We thank our farmer who feeds us. Thanks for your outstanding lecture. Thank you to assist us to know about the agriculture with your fine pictures. Though we faced network problem, we are unfortunate that way to unable to see your great presentation. Thanks to Anjana Devasalaman. Now, I would like to thank to Srilata Menon Ma'am. I'm very thankful to your outstanding phenomenal speech on conservation, how, what, and why. These questions are very important, not only in India, but globally. The insights and suggestions on Atmanirbhar India is appreciable. The point you mentioned in global warming, COVID-19, how to reduce your carbon footprint is really appreciable. Your questions, are we understanding the awareness to action is really thinkable. Your idea of eco-friendly festivals, living and also support to entrepreneurship, definitely exclusive and I'm sure we will give or create employment to our citizens to know the producers is really neat and important. Your work on Adivasis is fantastic. Your Diwali Dhamaka, the tagline and idea, hatches not cracks, will surely protect our mother nature. Today we are blessed by two women. Anjana Devas Siliman and Srilata Menon Man. And this is very auspicious coincidence that today's color of the Devi is green. This happened without planning. So great. Feeling blessed by today's Devi Kalaratri. Really, she dispelled darkness about environment out of our mind. Thank you, Srilata Menon Man, for your enlightened speech. Thanks a lot. Now I would like to announce today's evening, evening two speakers. Dr. Gauri Tamunkar, ma'am. Her topic is management. The honorable speaker, Commander Monika Sharma, ma'am. She will talk on the topic, the women in armed forces. Now, this is my appeal and request to audience. Please subscribe our YouTube channel, follow our Facebook page, Instagram, and Twitter. Please, thank you. And thanks for your presence. I'm very sorry for inconvenience cause of network problem Definitely. we unable to yeah. yeah we unable unable to show and inconvenience very sorry thank you i'm declaring now the session is an end thank you